Okay, tell me. Um, what do you expect? What do you, what do you want to get out of this? Yeah, I never had coaching before. Um, I know my backhand is not really good in my opinion. I make too much um, too much faults with mm -hmm. with the backhand, um, okay. and maybe my footwork is also not really good during during the match. Okay, have you played have you played club level before? Like in real life? Um, or? Yes, I play in a club, but but uh, not re really often. Good. So only okay. once a month or so. Okay, okay. So um, most of the time, I, I try to um, look at the basic strokes first, and then we can see where mm. we can go from there. So yep. uh, also a lefty, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so let's Great. let's start with uh, the backhand a bit, the uh, backhand counter drive. That's nice. I see you. You go back a bit, so you're already playing a little bit more topspin, which is, which is cool. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. Oops. Yeah, so I have to change something in my settings because it doesn't save. There we go. All right. Good. That's good. Uh, I don't really have any specific comments on that right now. We'll see how it works later in combination mm -hmm. with other strokes. So let's take a look at the foreign. stroke from your back end your back end is i mean it's not really a drive like you're already sp spinning up a bit which is which is yep. cool like if, if that's what you feel better with it's actually good that you can always do because you get a bit of extra curve on the forehand though you seem to be a bit scared and you let it drop a lot and then you do a lot of side spin which yep. is useful in the game of course because people don't expect it always mm. but uh, you will lack a bit of power after a while because yeah instead of in the back end you're really brushing over the top Mm -hmm. Here you're really like catching it with an open paddle almost, right? Yeah. So I think maybe it's a grip thing, but I guess the grip be between your forehand and backhand is the same for you. Yes. You don't switch grip, right? You you're playing with the adapter. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, okay, backhand, forehand. So uh, right now you're catching it here. Try mm -hmm. to catch it uh, at the highest point, or okay. maybe when it's still going up, and just guide it forward yeah mm -hmm. so what i said before you were already doing top spin the back end is good in this case because you're not totally in control yet uh, you don't have to play top spin so you can just drive it back all right so it's mm -hmm. mainly through the ball and a bit of brush not too much Oops. So you, can, you can catch it earlier and a little bit more flat that's fine okay yeah, that's it that's it good Oops. all right Okay, better, better. So, so on your back end, what I saw or what I seemed to see was that your feet were like in front of the back, and the ball coming in, right? Which is which is good. But on your front, I have a feeling your uh, left leg is a, is a, is back a bit too much, right? So you're facing there. Um, if you if you position yourself for a back end and you just mm -hmm. get over to your forehand, you should be in a good position. You shouldn't have to really move back that much more because then it's going to be much harder to get back to your back end. Yeah. Right, so keep it a little bit more parallel. And then what you're missing is a bit of control. So in the back end, it's easier because you're behind the ball, right? Yeah. You do that very well. But in the forehand, uh, you need to use your body and your shoulders maybe a little bit more to stabilize your stroke because now it's kind <laughs> of a little bit disconnected. Yeah. So uh, you you know how to do that maybe already. No, Sh uh, shift your weight a bit. Yeah. So you don't have to do a big stroke right now. So do mainly body and like 
stroke is very small, so it's yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. I see you lean a bit, and that's that's why you said as well also about footwork, right? Um, mm -hmm. So when it's ideally when you're playing better, you play a stroke and you're always kind of still jumping. No, you never stand still basically because mm -hmm. that makes you very active. Um, you can start doing that now, but I will probably be too much at once, so you can do that later. But what you can do in the beginning is instead of leaning, is just this left leg when you have to go deeper. I just move that one leg and come back. Right. Mm -hmm. So you move, like you do. You do like small side steps, right? And you have to create yeah. space here, to, and and you go there. I think you know that already as well, like from yes, yeah. the club. But just thinking about doing it because now sometimes I see you lean, and then it's very hard to use your body when you're you know unbalanced. So when your feet are under it, it's much easier to keep uh, mm -hmm. using your uh, your shift in weight. Oops. That's okay. Nice. Sorry. I don't know how much space you have, so that, that might be a, a factor as well. Um, I don't want to run out of the walls. Good. Good, good. That's good. So, okay. So you're still giving a side spin, which is it's not bad because it gives you you can do a stronger stroke without it going too fast, right? Yeah. So, but when you when you doubt, uh, like when you feel you, like you need to be able to go faster, uh, try to brush more on top. But that's something mm -hmm. that you can start doing as well on your own, like instead of always going side, trying to brush more with the ball, right? <laughs> Combination is, is deadly, right? It's just about having options. Because at some point, maybe you won't be able to, to fade, right? To go mm -hmm. to the other side. But if you can only play like this, there's a very big, how do you say it? Like you're gonna break your wrist trying to get there. So, oh, okay. so uh, right now you have to think of your paddle as an extension of your arm. Mm -hmm. Try not to close it more or open it more, just like in line with your arm, right? Yeah. And uh, afterwards, you can, you know, you can start adding some stuff, and then maybe like you were doing now, add a bit of. But like for stability, you know, see it as an extension of the arm. There we go. Good. That's good. <laughs> oh, it's good. You're moving well. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, like a side spin, of course, it builds up. If I bring it back, yeah, it's gonna be I know. <laughs> I'm gonna be gone. It's gonna be still there. Good. Nice. Oh, sorry. All right. I like it though because it's it's not easy for me to bring them back. A lot of them, I don't know if it's your, you wanted to do it, but a lot of them go to the middle as well, which is a good spot to play. Yeah, I, I think I do not have enough control. Yeah. This is the problem. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's after a while you lose control, like when it's a couple of strokes that come back. Yeah, because you, you go always more and more and more. Yeah. So what you can do is you can, like I said a little bit before, you use your body more, you can use it to guide the ball. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, because now you're like doing more and more arm. But yeah. um, if you like kind of wrap around the ball and guide it, mm -hmm. uh, the future balls are going to be easier because your distance to the table is good so you have some time 
to really catch it and, and, and get a feeling for where it's going, right? Let's see. You don't have to try to finish the point, just, yeah. Oops. There we go. Good. Side spin coming back. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. There we go. Was lean, but uh, yeah, it's normal in VR. It happens faster. So, using your feet is not as easy in VR as it is in real life. Good, 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 good. good. Control. So, if you're like, okay, now I control this uh, when I'm a bit further away and I'm not missing, and I want to add speed again. Mm -hmm. And uh, then what you do is start your stroke fast. You just wait for almost the same moment that you were doing just now to guide it. And then when the ball is almost there, that's when you speed up. All right? Mm -hmm. Don't speed up right away. Just wait for the ball, grab it, and speed up. Oops. Right. So... I think you might want to bend your knees a little bit more, be a bit lower to the ground. That's it. That's it. Oops. Sorry. Oh, no. Looks a lot better already. So what I what I see a little bit that you might want to control is um, you want to make sure that your first of all your elbow doesn't do do anything weird. You know, like it, it stays more or less in a controlled position, right? So mm -hmm. it, it you never create like a weird well, for something. Sometimes you can do it, but like for a good attacking stroke, you try not to add an angle to it, right? Yeah. And the same with the wrist. So you don't have to use the wrist to close it. Just let the wrist relax in the same direction that you're already doing the stroke. Just let it go, right? You don't have to add uh, anything that is not in the direction of your arm, right? Mm -hmm. So I brush it like this. If I want to add anything else, you know, you can you can change the angle a bit, but you don't have to do that on the moment of contact. But let's just say it's like this, and you want to add spin. The only thing you need to do is relax your wrist, right? Mm -hmm. so you don't have to put it at another angle because then. You know, your arm is moving like this, but the mm -hmm. bat is not following the same angle anymore. So, it, you know, you can start getting edges and stuff. So, and also because it doesn't do much and it will leave you in a position, you know, it will, it, you can get injured, you know, trying to yeah. go on top of it too much. So you can close it down a bit, but then maybe use your body to go lower, right? Mm -hmm. So you do a straight stroke, but your body goes down or goes forward. You can do that, but try not to do it too much with your elbow or wrist. Yeah, because, yeah you, you'll be out of position. It will be harder to get the next one. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Can... <laughs> this, of course, is a, is a problem uh, for me because yeah. um, I played, I played um, uh, many years in this, in this position. So it's, I it's know, I know. easy to change this. <laughs> I know, I have the same. But the, the thing is, in, v, in VR, you have a possibility to do it. Not you don't have to do it because if you're if you're confident with this, actually, you know, you can get a lot of quality by adding that extra thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's possible, but it, like that's something that maybe they do at the highest highest level and not on on the strongest stroke. Because if you go very strong, like then you're working against your own momentum, trying to you know yeah. change the curve, right? Mm -hmm. um, but like when it's about flicks, you know. Like really mm -hmm. wrapping it around it, that stuff that really, you know, that could really work yeah. out with that with that stroke. Yeah, the, the, but it's always up to you, of course, how much you want to change the stroke. Mm -hmm. um, and also knowing what is going on maybe and why you're missing can help maybe a bit, no? Uh, and you can keep doing 
that thing, but then maybe just time it better. So you first hit the, you, you, if you make sure that you hit the ball first and you already relax uh, your wrist the moment it, it hits, then afterwards you can basically do whatever you want, right? So it's not in the way anymore. But you don't do you don't do it that badly. It's just more worried about you injuring yourself than anything else. But if you've been doing it for years, I don't think you're going to get injured that easily. Good. Oops. Um, the reason why, like if, if you always go for side spin, sometimes it's going to be hard to just accelerate uh, on the mm -hmm. incoming spin. But I mean, Shushin does it all the time when he's back here, right? Because then the, the top spin is coming like this, and you can kind of ignore it. Mm -hmm. and put a lot of power to the side uh, while ignoring the spin that was coming in from the top. So there's, um, how do you say it? There's, uh, there's good, good points to doing it like this. But uh, like everything, it's always good to have a feeling for all different types. So you can do this as well, and you can do straight, and you know. It's going to be easier for you to adapt if something weird happens in the game. You get the ball here, you're able to swing it up, mm -hmm. but then when it's there, like really high, you don't have to wait for it. To, because right now, sometimes you have to wait. So if mm -hmm. you learn to hit it more on the top, you can catch it earlier and finish the point, right? Okay. You don't have to let it drop that much. So if you see that it goes further and you don't reach there well, make sure that you're there first and then you can let it drop and then yeah. when it drops you can do what you did before but when you're on top of it try to go more mm -hmm. over the ball yeah that's it and then you can be just like shushin ball close and when it's a bit further away <laughs> You said that was one of your issues, right? Uh, your forehand. Um, I I thought my backhand is is too bad. Okay. But with the forehand, uh, yeah, the the control is not really good as you yeah, saw. Yeah. Okay, so in the backhand, what can happen maybe is because what I saw, the stroke that you're doing is is like kind of next level, right? So you're already doing a good top spin, which means that if somebody plays you a ball that's maybe a, a bit different or maybe a little bit here, you try to do that stroke and you might not do it as well as you expect it to and then you miss, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, it might be interesting to, to have like uh, an easier stroke for if you don't read it well. Like if you're a little bit too late that you know you can just play like this and then when you read it well, you can do the full stroke that you were doing before, right? And maybe we should try a normal drive on your back end then as well to see if you yeah. if you have that. Oops. No, that's good. This is good. I think it's just about like a mental thing uh, and about choosing and of course about switching sides because that's a problem for a lot of people. This is very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So if I play it there, you're also good there, also good. Your back end is solid. <laughs> so maybe it's when it's on a back spin ball that you struggle more. See? I mean, it is a bit, e a bit harder still in the game. Band. That's good to control. I, mean, I like it. I like it a lot. So I think it's a confidence issue. Good. good. All right. Ball machine, I have no problems with the with the backhand, but yeah. during the match, I yeah. don't have the control. So that can depend on a couple of things. It can be because you're expecting a forehand, right? And then you're a little bit late for the backhand. That can be a thing. So I, I do I do that for sure because I'm I'm forehand oriented. A lot of the times I'm prepared for a forehand and then I'm a bit late for the backhand. So sometimes it makes sense if you know that you're going to do a certain serve that you know that's gonna come probably back here that you prepare for a back end, right? So at least some of the time you're ready to finish the point, right? And it's the same for the forehand. So 
I'm going to explain it in the video soon too, but uh, I call it like, well, I say 80%, but it depends. Uh, in real life, I would say, for example, I serve like this, and 80% mm -hmm. of the table, I'm going to play a forehand because okay. I, can, I have space enough, right? So in this game, I would say 60, 60, 50, 60 40%. <laughs> okay, 60, 40%. So if the ball comes here, I will play a forehand on this serve. Uh, but when it comes here, I will try to finish like this. So yeah. why is that important? It means that when I serve, I am already like, I serve and I get ready. But in my mind, I'm, I'm expecting to get a forehand, to play a forehand. So when it is a forehand, I'm ready for it. When it's a backhand, I'm also ready, but like a little bit less ready. But I know that if it's a backhand, it's going to come just in this part. So mm -hmm. I should be like, I'm, I'm already right behind the ball and I should be able to finish it, right? So it's, it's about having a plan. It doesn't mean that you have to be ready like this, right? You just in your mind, you know, if it comes forehand, I'm going to play forehand. And then like we just saw now, because sometimes you're not active enough with your backhand, it's the same thing. Um, ready in your mind, the chance is good that it's going to be a backhand. So you're ready for it. Yeah. So you prepare for a backhand with a serve. In general, if you mm -hmm. play reverse pendulum serve, yeah. because of the difficulty of leaving it in your fore and then keeping it low. So if they try to play it here, it's supposed to be an easier ball, so you don't have to prepare for it too much. But uh, the, most of the time, they will try to put it back here, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do a, a reverse pendulum or anything that goes that way, like your backhand serves could be like this as well, you can prepare a little bit more for a back end, right? And if they leave it here, just step in and finish. So, um, it's a little bit like that. But then when the point gets longer, of course, you have to think of the angles that you're opening and closing. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, of course, next level. So imagine that uh, I serve, you play here, and then I play down the line, right? I yeah. play there. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't stay here. Like if I stay here and just prepare for a back end, you have so much stable here. Like the chance is very big that you're gonna play this side, right? Mm -hmm. so I have to move and cover the middle. And if it comes here, I'm not gonna attack. I'm just gonna, you know, put it back. When it comes here, I can step back and then attack. And when you put it really deep, I will attack with my forehand, right? So it's about um, being able to attack has a lot to do with your positioning um, after you do your own stroke, mm -hmm. right? So it also has to do with how far you are from the table. So a lot of people that I see, and we can see later maybe if, you're, if that's the case with you, they serve and they stay very much on top of the table, yeah. right? So if you're going to spin up a backspin ball, that's more or less <laughs> okay. But anything else, if you do a fast stroke, you should take a step back. So you have space mm -hmm. uh, to continue and you have a little bit more time to respond, right? Okay. Yeah, usually, usually I stay at least um, one arm, arm length behind the table. So yeah, well, we're just warming up. I saw like a really good distance for you, mm -hmm. but I can imagine like when you serve that you might forget to step back. I do it uh, so we can check that later if that's happening to you. Could be. Um, but yeah, okay, 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 okay. So maybe, Okay, let's let's just look for a second uh, to uh, your pushes because it might be also that um, if you're missing intent on other strokes, maybe it's too easy for other players to open the whole table, and then you're gonna be late as well. So, um, for example, if if I don't want if I want to keep attacking, I can't play like this, right? So I have to play more like either well either very deep, you know, or <laughs> very short and low, which that wasn't, to stay in control of the point. Uh, because then when you you attack, either you you have to do something like this, and then I can attack the next one, or you have to push back yourself, and then you can uh, then I can attack the next one as well. So the the only thing is there, of course, once you're unsure and you start passing the ball like this, even if it's not this much, eh, just a little bit, then you're gonna be under pressure, and you don't know where the ball's gonna go. Mm -hmm. But if you're like if you play with intent, you know, you put it there, and then you're ready. Um, it's gonna be much easier for you to keep attacking. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just push a couple. You mean so? Yeah. Nice. Oops. Oops. That's okay.
So there's one tip that I can give you that I give to a lot of players, um, even though you, you do it very well. If they play short uh, to the middle, for example, wait, like this. right now you stepped in and you step to the side to be able to go under the ball, right? Uh, what you can do is, is you can step in and go with your paddle straight forward. Okay. That way you don't have to go to the side and create the space. You can just go straight mm -hmm. in. It's the same for the forehand, you know? So okay. you can do this, which is like uh, more of a slice already. It's not really a push, right? Because this is a push. It's really pushing. It's a slice. That's what you're doing, and it's good. But like if you don't have the space for it, just go, you know, straight, yeah. mm -hmm. head down. That's it. That's it. Good. <laughs> well, I never tried this before. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Like, if you have the space for it, you can you can do like these slices, which are a bit more aggressive. But in this case, you're probably like returning a serve and being able to to catch it early and then push it deep, for example, can uh, give you an advantage. And if you have to wait and let it drop and then do this, you give them a little bit more time. So the idea of the push as well is that you catch it quite early, right? So the slice, you let it pass the highest point, and then you you slice, right? Push, you catch it before it's all the way up. That's the idea. So this is push. This, this is a slice, not good, but it's, it's one. <laughs> The best at pushing, by the way, you might have noticed. Point, <laughs> but it is important. It is important. It gives you a good feeling. So, what what I happen, what I end up doing a lot, is um, adding more stuff to the side. So I'm not that dependent. You know, that's good. Oh, no, <laughs> that's very good. So, um, if you play a bit more with side spin, sometimes you can add more mm -hmm. and stay in control. <laughs> You're doing really well. All right, let's let's look at the forehand and see if uh, <coughs> some feeling there. Okay, let's, yeah, let's again, your backhand actually has a good good technique for most of the strokes, and your forehand is just a little bit slower, a little bit later. <coughs> you feel more less confident. Uh, this, this is because. Um, usually, with the forehand, I play very aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like, um, how do you say it? There might be something with your with your grip, because I see like you're, you don't seem that comfortable. It doesn't seem that natural your forehand. Because first it was uh, the side spin, and now it's also a little bit. Like seems like something is bent at some point. I don't know if it's true, because huh? I can't see your arm. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Oops. But in the end, of course, it's what you're comfortable with. Like, if you say, like, I've been playing like this for years, you don't have to change everything. I'm just trying to see where it's coming from. This is good. Sorry. <laughs> if you want to attack, if it's long, you can. Huh? You know. <laughs> Oops. Oh, nice. All right. So I'm going to make a video. It might take a while, but I'm going to make a video on switching sides. And I mm -hmm. think for you, that's going to be key as well. Because yeah. you have good control if it's just one side. But like this, like, yeah, you you automatically keep going with yeah. your forehand instead of switching, which mm -hmm. uh, should become a bit more natural after a while. And probably when you're attacking, it's the same thing. When it doesn't go where you expected. It's, it's normal, by the way. It's like it happens to everybody. So I see in here you're like kind of passing the ball a bit more. So mm -hmm. to make sure if, if somebody serves to your forehand that you you have to try to make sure that when you can't attack that you can really get behind the ball because right now it's more like passing the ball, right? So that's something mm -hmm. that you can work on to really um, and you can use that side spin that you that you use, but then like this for example, right? So go around it. Let's see. 
I'll do it short because that's when you're gonna need it. So I play short and then you can try to add a little bit more spin. Let's see. Short. Yeah, you do like this and in your back end you do the full motion and here you do like a softer thing. So you, can, you don't have to be afraid, you can really go under mm -hmm. the ball. Oops. Okay. okay, so now we're doing the slice for a second, but it's it's important because that's where you have feeling on your back end as well. So mm -hmm. all right, good. Yeah, you feel more confident there slicing. That's good. It's good to know. You have to know as well what you're more confident with, right? So uh, if mm -hmm. it comes short and you're like, oh, I want to do something. But you're not confident there. Maybe it's okay to let it drop a little bit and then do this. What you just did, okay. just aim it well, right? To put it in my belly, for example. That I don't know what to do, and then always train on the the faster push, right? Um, mm -hmm. Let's try to get better at that. Okay. Okay. So you mean I ha I should um, play back the ball before it's on the highest on the highest point. Well, if you push, yeah. So if you push, if if you want to use the incoming spin and, and use that to keep it low and add just a little bit of speed or, or keep it short, um, then you use the the momentum of the ball going up. Okay. Um, because it, also because the timing, like if you play me and I wait and I do this, you have a lot of time. Like this, you don't have that much time. It's not It's not like the ball goes faster, but you hit it earlier, right? It's the same for when it's short. If you want to leave it short and you just wait and then do this, you have yep. a lot of time. If you catch it early and you can keep it short, which is not that easy in this game, they will have trouble getting there, right? So it's okay. You don't have to do either one of them. You know, you can do anything in between, but just mm -hmm. don't think about it. If you want to keep it short and you want to bother your opponent by playing a bit faster, then you need to catch it early, right? And maybe play a bit more flat, right? Yep. And don't go really under the ball. But if you're like, no, I want to add more spin and I, I want to take my time, mm -hmm. um, then you can do this. So it also depends on your game. You know, all, uh, there's a lot of defenders, even when you serve the first one, they, they, they do this, right? They just start chopping. Mm -hmm. That's fine too. If that's, because that gives them time, because it's a slower ball. It's easier for their opponent, but they're not scared of the opponent attacking because that's their, that's their game. So mm -hmm. it's, it all depends a little bit on, on how you play. So. If you if you're confident that you can block the next ball or slice the next ball when they attack, uh, you can you can take your time. You don't have to f force anything or play mm -hmm. faster. All right. Okay. 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 So I've seen those. Uh, maybe show me a couple of your serves so we can see where you build up your. Uh... Uh, usually, I play this. Uh... Okay. So when you play this, uh, where do you expect the ball to go? Uh, here. Yeah. And you want to play a forehand there. Yes. Because usually, usually with the with the backhand, so a right hander um, oh, yeah. will bring it back to this because of my side spin. That's yeah. That's not a it's not a bad point. But then uh, it's a little like the same. Do it. Do it again. Do it again. It's a little bit the same like uh, I said before. So it's hard to keep low. So it's perfect. Actually, it's good. It's good. That's nice. Nice. That's good. Yeah, you give a lot of side, so I would I would play with my back end. If I was a left hander, right, I would mm -hmm. go for the ball. If I would be a a right hander, I would probably try to follow with my forehand. I try mm -hmm. to play it more or less down the line. Now the reason is the same as what I said, because what you're actually doing there is a reversed pendulum, right? So in yeah. principle for me, it's easier to go you know, as a right-hander or as a left-hander maybe as well to go into. Oh, oh yeah, no. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I thought that was a collision. Uh, go into the spin, right? That's gonna be easier for me. And if I want to do that and control it well, I'm gonna aim more there because if I try to play it there, it's gonna sit up. And then, of course, like you said, it's gonna be an easy point. Mm -hmm. But if you play higher levels, I would expect 
like 60% of the balls or 70% of the balls to go from the middle to the back end, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do this serve, it's okay to prepare like this and be a bit prepared for a back end. And then when it does land there, because it's just 20%, just finish like you always do. But then mm -hmm. when they play here, you know, you're ready to attack. Yeah. Um, so you have to play a little, bit, a little bit with that. It depends on your opponent as well. If you know that whenever you do this, they always play here, yeah. just get ready. But uh, be prepared that when you play a higher level, they will start trying to put it to put it here. Because mm -hmm. here is, uh, it's going to be very hard for them to keep it low on this side. Mm -hmm. They're going to try yeah. to keep it more to your middle and, and back end. What else? What other serves do you have? Yeah. I also play the fast stuff. All right. Yeah. Or on the other side. Depends on the opponent. Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, spread, the spread is good, and to be able to play from there to there is good. But yeah, if you play fast down the line here, uh, mm -hmm. it's very easy because, yeah, you leave a lot of table open there. Yeah. Um, for sure. The thing is, you can do that serve if it's a surprise, right? Okay. So right now I see you prepare. Oh, well, basically you're here, right? So I see you prepare and uh, you do this serve, right? Mm -hmm. But if you start like this, right? And it's almost always short and then you go faster, then I'm more surprised. I'm not ready for it, right? Mm. So you have to watch out when you play these fast balls and it's very obvious that you do them. If you saw my first video as well, the lesson, um, mm -hmm. it's it's m quite easy to to take control of the game because you just give like a, a fastball that's I don't have to do much because you already put the speed in it I just have to yeah. put it back and it's gonna be very mm -hmm. hard to get there and then varying it to this side is a good idea if I'm not expecting is because if I'm expecting this the angle is even bigger you know, yeah. I have to play even slower <laughs> and, and you're never gonna get there so what I would say is there um, try to disguise these serves like by doing similar motions for other ones. So do you have like a pendulum serve or anything like that? Yeah, I, I only play the, the kind of tomahawk serve. So. Tomahawk, yeah. Okay. That's, that's cool. So when you do this, this serve, um, you can also uh, try to hit it more on the top, right? And then you can create... Uh, wait. <coughs> you, can, you could possibly create this serve but doing it like this, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go from here, from here, from here, from here to there. So it, it all looks more like more similar. But just make sure when you when you do this one that you move a little bit back into the middle, mm -hmm. uh, just just so you're able to to reach all the. Because of course when you do it here, you know you have to recover here. It also depends where you put. So if I if I do this serve and I play it there, I have to make sure that my back end is covering the middle already, right? Yeah. If I, if I do the serve down the line, if I stay here, it's very dangerous. So before they can even, even touch the ball, I need to be more or less here, right? Mm -hmm. Again, it all depends. If they don't know how to return the serve and it always goes the same direction, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, variety and placement. So if I, if I play it there, um, like I said, it's the same as this one. Try to make sure that you have some space for a backhand. If you have the space to pivot, you can stay like this but only yep. if you know that you can still reach the line. Mm -hmm. I don't know how fast you are. Uh, in real life, I can do it, but in VR, I, I don't get there. I'm too slow. Okay. So in real life, I will serve like this, you will play me there. And even if you play it here, I will get there. But here there's like a windowsill, so I'm scared. <laughs> so yeah. I don't do it. Usually, usually after this surf, also yeah. if I play a faster surf, I make the one step. Good, 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 good. good. Yeah, then it's, then it's already a lot better. Um, but yeah, because because you're doing such an obvious motion, I already know that it's going to be top spin. So it's always nice. That's why the the tomahawk is good because you can do the tomahawk to your side like you were doing, or you can pull it down, right? Mm -hmm. It's working better than before. Or you can uh, hit the top of it, right? So try to vary, like if you can vary that more, like the different yeah. types of effects. Yeah, we'll really do this. Yeah. This with with the top spin. Good. Well, Backspin. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Or yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's surprising. Mm -hmm. So that's better. That's better. Because this one, I mean, I guess you do it because sometimes you get a lot of topspin on it or a lot of speed. Yeah. So if it works, it's fine. 
but you have to know that it's yeah it's much easier to read than everything that you do there right. yes usually usually i i vary um with with the spins in the match so that i do not do two serves um that that are totally the same <laughs> usually yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay okay so it also depends where my body is of course so if you play that fastball and you play it here it's gonna be easy but play it here yeah. and i have to move out of the way you know yeah. so it might be a, if you want to keep using it that think think of like where you place it and also like it depends always so look at your opponent first like how they're prepared and then yeah. try to choose if you want to play that fast one where you're going to put it yeah. probably in this case because it's so fast the middle is probably not a bad idea yeah. probably try try to try to serve um to my my elbow with that one yeah look i'm not attacking that one like yeah. i can bring it back and then of course yeah variety that's it that's it that's good it's good enough that's yeah <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, I see you move like this. I can take a step back, right? So what you can do, or at least to to fool them, is like you prepare like this, and then you put like a short, stupid one there. Yeah. Right. So you can like if, if there's a way for you to switch uh, mm -hmm. at the last second, you notice that your opponent is really getting used to it. You can really mix it. Mm -hmm. For example, when you were doing this one, I was always prepared because you were doing it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, if you just put it to me once, deep in the forehand, like short in the forehand, I'm not going to be that comfortable here anymore either, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about that variety and trying to uh, put them off balance. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah, like even then, uh, in real life, I think this is going to be hard serve to to really capitalize on because it's a bit too obvious. But uh, mm -hmm. I like all the all the tomahawk stuff, and then the mm -hmm. one that you did that was the other direction is also good because if you can work a little bit more on that, um, yeah. you know, switching the the side effect, because some people they they just they're not worried about one side effect, but you do the other one and they're like, oof, they can't do anything anymore. So it's good yes, to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe we should play a couple of points. Yes. Uh, right. Then we can see. Um, yeah, now we can see what, what's going on, maybe, no? Because mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, specific issues. Um, let's play unranked. Yes. All right. Let's go. why it works though that that's what i can see now All right. 
so first of all, what I saw was stuff that worked, right? So I think I know where you feel more confident in your forehand and it's time because I saw now, like because of the way you move in your forehand, you have almost double the time as that you have in your back end. So yeah. you, you leave it a bit more space and you do uh, this, this stroke, which is very annoying uh, on my side. So that's it's not a bad idea. So like I said, it's still good to train to be able to finish. But uh, mm -hmm. the whole reason why you're so confident there is because you have a bit more time. Now the back end, because of being behind the ball, you need to catch it a bit earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it can be a little bit more dangerous. And a, a, if you're a little bit nervous, it's easier to, in your case at least, because you have less time um, to, to lose track. So what you could do is maybe take a small step back, so have a little bit more time, and maybe play a little bit softer. Um, though right now, what you were showing was very good. Like you really, like you spun it up really well deep to the corner a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It was, was not bad just now, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So I saw stuff that worked. How did you feel about what you, what just happened? Um, <clears throat> I think it it could be as you said. I have to. I have not enough time uh, on my backhand, and so sometimes the quality is very good. Yeah. Um, the backhand side, but often uh, the ball goes to the net or goes too long. So, yeah. Just on the forehand, I saw a lot of confidence. But yeah, you let it, you let the ball drop, mm -hmm. which is fine for now. That's something that you can work on, but it, you don't have to get rid of what gives you confidence right away, right? So in your back end, that's why I said like your stroke, your basic stroke, is a bit too much, right? So what I would advise you to do is do like a more compact stroke to train it. So like right now, when I left the ball like this, you didn't miss like because I left it like this. But if I play you a ball like this. You don't have the same time, right? For sure, if it's a forehand from a right-hander and they play, <coughs> they play a little bit more aggressive, you don't have time to do the whole motion. So try to stay behind the ball and play a bit more compact and flat. And that's something that you can uh, train quite well with a, with a ball launcher as well. So maybe put like the, the speed of the ball, not the speed of the ball, the frequency of the ball quite high. So you have a lot of balls coming in. So you don't have time to make a big motion. And then mm -hmm. you can try to figure out what works for you. Right? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And then of course, you have to try to not make it too fast so you can still use, use your feet, but just to find a stroke that works for you at a certain speed, it might be good just to go a little bit fast for a second and see, okay, this is a stroke that I can manage at high speed. And then once it's this speed, this is the movement movement I do the one from before. Yeah, and the forehand, um, right now, of course, you're, but it's okay because as a player, you you need a little bit more time. I can see that. I have the same as well because I have big strokes. Um, <clears throat> so you don't have to be on the ta over the table and speed everything up because if somebody can follow you, uh, you'll be in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you play faster but flat, but they're there anyway, it returns so fast that you're not going to be there, right? So letting this forehand wait and take a little bit of time, it gives you more time as well, right? So in the back end, like I would make sure that I aim it well, like to the body. So when they hit the ball, they can't attack and it just comes back a bit slower. And the next one you can attack for under back end, probably back end. <laughs> um, in the back end, I, do, I don't exactly know how you can slow down the game. Um, it depends maybe on, I think in serve returns, maybe you can try to, to slow down the game a bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you how you return uh, my serves to your back end. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in this case, you can slow down the game by playing faster. Because if I play backspin, um, mm -hmm. you leave it here like this. I have a lot of options, and I can speed up the game myself. Mm -hmm. If you manage to play it deep, fast to my back end, right to this zone. For sure, mm -hmm. if I'm serving like this and I forget to, to move back, so it depends. If you see that, I, that I'm always ready, mm -hmm. perfect, right? But if you see that I, that I just serve and I stay here, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm preparing to play a forehand and I'm not mm -hmm. prepared to do anything here, right? So in that case, you don't have to attack, but just, uh, yeah, in your case, <coughs> deep, 
to my mm-hmm. backend. Let's try. For short, of course, but like that was. Yeah, you can you can do that a little bit more forceful. <laughs> yes, okay. Maybe catch it a little bit earlier. Okay. That's better. Can be a bit more. <laughs> yeah, it's it's also about getting the feeling for it. That's if that drops, it's it's very good. Yeah. So in this case, because it is going still a little bit slow, even though I'm still here, I have time to step back and spin. So in that case, um, if your if if your returns are not that fast, if they're just like this, try to go a little bit more for the elbow in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, try to play a little bit more there. Yes. So it it really depends on on where your opponent is, right? How he moves after the serve, and all. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, the best thing to slow down the game is if I serve you like this, if you can push it short yeah. uh, and low. Of course, in the game, it's quite hard to keep it low. But if you manage to push this short, that it bounces twice, mm. then I might not be able to attack. But it's always a bit of a danger, right? Because there's a lot yeah. of people that can flick really good in the game. So I would say don't do it always. But um, try to do it in a way that even when they flick, like it's less quality, right? So, yeah, <laughs> how to do that, right? So, um, replacement again. So a lot of the times, actually, in the middle, short, it's quite hard, and that's for people that really uh, use their back end and they go over the table. Mm-hmm. But then your next table can be here, and it's going to be hard for them. Um, but um, for a forehand, a lot of people don't have the space to really. To flick it there, hmm. so then you do have to prepare it for uh, a lot of range, right? You have to make sure that you are in the center of the table, mm-hmm. um, but at least they shouldn't be attacking too fast. Like they can do some acceleration a little bit, but they they're not really. And that's the thing. Like I serve, and you try to play it short. I get prepared for it, and then you play deep here, and I might not be prepared. All right. Um, let's see. So your forehand is good because it matches your game. Mm-hmm. But try to try to work on on uh, yeah. I guess these balls that are really just ready to be killed. Sorry. Um, but yeah, like you just did now, you can just do a calm stroke and really open the angle as well. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to finish finish the points, but it's something you can try to train because it's fun <laughs> and it can be useful. The backhand, a little bit smaller, so you have it, right? So when you feel insecure, just make sure that you pass the ball back. Mm-hmm. Try, to, try to do it actively and try to like aim for the middle, right? Or, or if you see that they're out of position, aim for the place where they are not. And mm-hmm. use their speed, right? Yeah. Um, it might not be your game because you're used to doing this top spin, but if you, are, if you notice that you're missing a lot, just it's okay. Just do this one until you get this ball and then attack, right? Or a ball is low but this low, and then you can attack. But if you get a ball like this, just put your, just try to bring it back with sp- with, with speed um, in a good position, and that's it. Yeah. All right. Do you have any other specific questions? Well, no, not at the moment. <laughs> I think <laughs> I have to yeah, take no, a look. Okay. If I can grant this with the ball launcher, yeah, 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 and we will yeah, it's, a lot. it's a lot of information always, but yeah, I, I kind of do this review based on on what I see, but then like the training itself, because you have the ball launcher, you can do as much as you want, so I prefer mm-hmm. to to really look for specific things. Mm-hmm. Um, I like your side effect though, so it's but I think if you do it in real life where there's enough space for me to go, that stroke might be a bit too slow to really do damage, right. So it's good, you know, to keep the ball in the game and to keep it going, but it will keep coming back. So mm-hmm. at some point, your back end is already quite final. Like you can attack well with your back end, but it might make sense to try to go from this to like a closed angle attack on your forehand, mm-hmm. um, just to train it so you have it in your arsenal, right? All right. Okay. Okay. I guess that's it then. Uh, it's like <laughs> I say thank you.
Oh, no, thank you, thank you. I, I hope it helped, and uh, I I hope to see uh, how well you're doing soon. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said, it's up to you. So you have your own game, you have your own way of playing for for years already. So just try to see where and how you can adapt it. Because probably when I'm talking about this stroke and then changing it for a shorter one, you probably have one already. But you're not just you're just not that conscious about it, right? You probably have it somewhere. So try to find it uh, and and see if you can use it a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So maybe maybe we can make uh, a coaching again next week or in two weeks. Yeah, or in two weeks or whenever you want. You can you can choose whenever, like because it really depends on how much time you spend on your own. So mm -hmm. uh, you can always tell me when you want to schedule a new a new session, and then we try to schedule it, and then uh, mm -hmm. we can go from there. If you want to okay. do it next week or two weeks from now, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I will I will send you the message um, uh, in Discord. Maybe next I, I'm not sure. Maybe next Thursday at about the same time. Sure, sure, sure. You just check it out. Uh, make sure that you that you know what you have to know to to make the decision, and then let me know, and I'll see if I can uh, I can make the same time. But um, honestly, like. Um, with the ball launcher and everything, like unless you have specific questions right away, of course, uh, and you want me to check up, uh, you can probably do uh, two weeks easy uh, mm -hmm. working on, on the things that we discussed. Um, so you have to see a little bit how, how you feel about that as well, because you know you can you can take you're allowed to take your time with with something. But if you're like, no, I'm gonna train like ten hours a day <laughs> on these specific things, sure, and we can meet each other right away. So whatever whatever you you prefer. Yeah, very good. Um, Will you send me the link to the to the video, or do you will you have it in in your channel? Uh, I normally have it in my channel, but I have to check because my TV, uh, my my screen um, fell out, which means that it was only filming because for some some reason it uh, it changes the resolution and then it just films it films only your part. But uh, okay. I'll see how the, how it looks, and if it looks okay, I'll put it. If it doesn't look okay, I can still send it to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I normally like when I have a bit of time, I write a little bit of a summary, so mm -hmm. you can you can look back at that and see the things okay. that we just. All right. Okay. So then, thank you for the coaching. Yeah. No worries. And see you next time. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye.